that kickoff return average. Oh, he is absolutely an outstanding young talent. And there is Gary Custon, number 11, the six-foot senior out of Santa Ana, California. As we get set to go, the Coors Light kickoff, this Pac-10 game of the week, is brought to you by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. A near-capacity crowd expecting a total over 52,000 people have come out on a, quite frankly, a beautiful early fall afternoon here in southern Arizona. It is a windy afternoon. The wind is blowing directly out of the south from your right to left. Rustin to kick it away. Russell White, number four, and Damian Simeon, number two. Because of that wind, you see Costin teeing that ball up on the right hash mark. And it is airborne with the wind at his back. It'll be White five yards deep, and he'll go down on a knee. will have possession here to begin the ball game at their own 20-yard line. And there's the man we talked about a moment ago, Mike Pulaski, the 6'3 junior. He has been outstanding. 66% effectiveness. There's a look at the backs and receivers. Brian Treggs, number three. He leads the Pac-10 in receiving better than seven catches a game. And the offensive line is keyed by the big right tackle, Ernie Rogers. There is a flag on the kickoff while the officials discuss exactly what it is. I think it was after the play, Bill. There was an exchange of words down there between the two teams. So emotions high here early in this football game. They haven't even run a, ball, a play as yet. It's against Arizona, and that is a terrific break as far as Cal is concerned, moving that ball out to the 35. Personal foul, Wildcats. So it's just as good as if Russell White had returned it 35 yards. It is first and 10 as we get set to go. Wallace is the tailback. He has the football, and he is up across the 40-yard line and dropped near the 41. Darren Case, the inside linebacker on the left side, moving over to put a stop to that six yards advance. Defensively for Arizona, they utilize the customary 3-4, and it is keyed by Reggie Johnson. He has three of Arizona's 15 sacks here in 1990. Zeno Alexander is the outside linebacker on the left side. He is a load in the defensive backfield. Paul Matt, say no more than number four, Darrell Lewis, number two in the nation. tackle because of the injury to Ty Parton and boy does he make the most. Well that's a big big turnover and of course Arizona we had mentioned earlier that leads the conference in turnovers and right now in the early going of this football game two plays run they have the football and you can credit Marcel Wade with the hit first and 10 Arizona. Ronnie Veal at quarterback in motion. It is McGee. comes in. The tackler is Cornell Collier. Might have been a face mask. And that's the play that is the key to this attack. We're going to get a hold against Arizona. Well, that was out in front of the play, but that is the, the type of a play that is really the backbone of this offense. The option really is what has to function in order to make the rest of the attack go for them. We'll see the hold right there. Holding the outside. Ten yard little kick out. of the foul. Replay first down. It was Kyle Jan. Jan. Kyle. Or Kyle Jan, I should say. They grabbed a little hook on him there. Offensively for Arizona, Ronnie Beal. He's a 5'10 senior out of Bernadina Beach, Florida. Art Whitehouse, an outstanding tailback. We will be calling his name all afternoon long on the offensive line. Rick Warren, he is a big left guard. And boy, I'll tell you, he is out of Iola, Kansas, and he is tremendous. They'll run it in behind Warren all afternoon. Now from the traditional eye come the Wildcats at the Cal 45-yard line. Great house. Back to Beal. He's going for it all. And at the 8-yard line, it is incomplete. Michael Bates, who is playing out on a slot back 
position, had gotten behind the defensive secondary, and Vale couldn't lay it in there. Good coverage by Ray Sanders. Now, for California, whether they are competitive or not, it'll depend on that front three, and they're keyed by Rep Hall. He has three and a half of five California sacks. The linebackers, Castle Redmond, he is a tough competitor, and in the secondary, John Hardy, he has Cal's only interception of the 1990 season. It is second down now and 15 from the 45. Second time to take the deck. There goes the Wildcat crew that stands already. <laughs> They're getting an early start on moving him up through the crowd. Cal defensively, a little bit of an adjustment to deal with this running attack that Arizona features. A little unusual from what you would see normally. It isn't quite an eye formation. They call it the eye bone. Mike Streetnik, the only setback behind Beal. with very, very lack coverage. Play a very soft zone. They really did, and Griffin did a good job of adjusting to the football. The ball down low, feel out clean, trying to decide whether to run or throw, but when he sees that, he puts it away, noticing that he throws the ball to the, to the left side as you look at it, because he saw the defender in the way, Griffin making the adjustment to go down for the football. Terry Vaughn goes wide to the right, David Lockhart, the flanker, wide left. was John Belli. We'll be watching the effectiveness of the California nose guard, John Belli. He has a very, very badly banged up foot. Well, he has a sprained arch. There's the action. And then it just looks like Beal going back the other way for some reason, possibly. Well, it looked, it looked like uh, a possible counter move and nobody came there. They don't, you don't normally run a naked option. <laughs> That's what he was running. Well, Belli stepped around Arizona Center. Orland like nobody was there. Now it is sacked down. They're calling it 12. Field on the draw. It goes to the fullback. Mario Hampton. He is inside the 15-yard line and dropped the first down for the Wildcats. Well, that's a companion play similar to the pass that he threw a few moments ago to Richard Griffith, the tight end. He starts, Veal does, on a sprint out type action. That gets people moving as you see him coming to the left and then Hampton setting to his left, coming back, and of course, the draw play upfield. Hampton, excellent job, good strength. First down, Wildcats. Option left, it comes to the near side. It is Hampton once more, and he doesn't get much. Well, possibly. Well, Hampton is not the kind of a back that is uh, going to give you a leg and take it away. He doesn't use a lot of shake and bake. He weighs 222 at just six feet tall. And as a matter of fact, from the time he came to Arizona, he has dropped 20 pounds. So he was in that 245 range. That is John Hardy in the left corner for California. With Bruce Snyder and the medical staff looking on, that's a player they can ill afford to lose. You are absolutely right. That's exactly what I was thinking. He took one back roughly 100 yards uh, in the first game against Wisconsin on an interception. And they, they, they don't have the kind of depth that uh, is the luxury of some other teams in the Pac-10 Conference. They have good frontline people, but as you know, when the season progresses, you get a few people wounded, you run into trouble. Yeah, well, while the medical staff looks over, John Hardy will take time out. 11.31 to play on the first period. We are scoreless from Arizona Stadium in Tucson. While we were away, we would expect perhaps to see him return. You take a look at what happened to him right there. He ran helmet to helmet with Mario Hampton and then took a shot from his own player. Yeah, that's a big mismatch, size-wise. Second down and seven. Look at that full house back here by Arizona. Coming to the near side, it is being... He turns the corner, he's got room, puts it back in. Coming down the line, he gets the man in motion in front of it to help block out. That's number 20, Michael Bates, to give him an extra blocker. Boston protects 
You can't allow them to get two or three touchdowns in front of you because they're going to keep the ball all day. Yes, they are. They're going to run probably 50 or 60 times in the course of this football game. Now, they've thrown their, their average for a quarter, and it's still 11-16 to go. So they're not going to put the ball up. But they want to dictate to you when they want to pass the ball, not because they have to. So they're going to run the ball against Cal. Now, Cal, on the other hand, defensively, has made some adjustments in this game. It doesn't look like it's helped, at least in the beginning. They got Cornell Collier, one of their linebackers, who is lined up back behind their two inside linebackers, Bill Ayer and Castle Redmond, somewhat like a rover or strong safety moving around to the play. They did not get a very good adjustment on that option and, quite frankly, give credit to the execution of Arizona because they can a lot of Cal jerseys and players down on the ground with excellent blocking for Fields to turn the corner. We talked at the outset that that man right there adds so much versatility to the Wildcat attack. He, he's not a particularly gifted passer, but I'll tell you one thing. He runs the option and runs out of the eye as well as anybody they've had here under Dick Tillman. As well as anybody in the country. Absolutely. That's the way Dick Tillman feels. He's got great quickness. And as you can see, his cutting ability there at the goal line, breaking back in for six points. Boston lets it sail. End over end. Again, it is Russell White. And this will go out of the end zone. So White will be denied a possible return for the second time here in the ball game. Cal with their ball at their own 20-yard line on their second possession of the day. Well, that's one way to keep a guy that averages 45 yards a carry from hurting, isn't it? We'll see him earlier, too, I mean, later on as the game goes. and You see what the numbers are there. Three minutes. It took him eight plays to go the 40 yards and feel a nice 12-yard run for the touchdown. It's knocked off his feet there by Jeff Hammerschmidt. Hammerschmidt leading the Wildcat defense in tackles from his free safety spot. He has brought 24 players to their knees. Well, Anthony Wallace, a fine football player, he had uh, 154 yards against Washington State a week ago, so you know he could rack them up. So Malt comes to the near side. The pitch again goes to Wallace. He turns it inside and runs into four Navy Blue jerseys. Well, when they take Wallace out of there, they bring Russell White in. So if they've got two real quality backs in the tailback position, they're going to carry the football the majority of the time. Mike Pulaski spent three years learning this position from one of the true greats, Troy Taylor. He's third in the conference in passing efficiency. Pulaski hitting over 66% of his passes. The fastest man on the defensive team, if you can believe that, folks, at 243 pounds. Take a look. Pulaski doesn't know that he's coming from the backside. He senses it a little bit, but Johnson just runs him down before he can get started. Boy, Reggie Johnson just blew past Troy Ozin, the left tackle. And Ozin is 6'7", 270, but that quickness is too much. Trip wide outs to the top of your screen as Pulaski looks like he's got time. Throws on the crossing pattern. Seven plus catches a game. Good coverage by Darrell Lewis. And listen to the crowd as that defensive unit comes off. Well, that was a great matchup there because Traggs is as good a receiver as you're going to see. He likes to talk to those defensive backs and get them off balance a little bit. Doesn't have much effect on Darrell Lewis in that play. Here is Robbie Keane, third in the conference in punting with an average of better than 42 yards. And this is a beauty. It's into a pretty good win. It is taken at the 31 yard line by Darrell Lewis, and down he goes. A 44 yard punt. That'll stop the clock with 9.34 to play. Arizona over Cal, 7 to nothing. You're watching the Pac 10 Game of the Week. Hills High School in Granada Hills.
Beals, California, and he is taken out by John Hardy. Well, I'll tell you what Ron Beal saw there. The fact of the matter is, is that Cal was using that defense where they moved the linebacker, Cornell Collier. He was eight yards deep, right directly over the center. They were one man less on that weak side. And Beal went to an option pass to that side. He had him outnumbered. From the midfield strike, the give is to the first man through. It is Mike Swick, and he is dropped by Red Bull. Talking with their defensive coordinator, and coordinator yesterday, they talked about having a couple little wrinkles on defense. Putting Collier back there is to get him in pursuit of the play. However, he leaves the weak side of the defensive formation. And there is a, a big victory by USC, I'll tell you that. But when he leaves that side, then they're outnumbered that way, and Beal is running left. Second down in seven from the 47. comes near side, turns it in, crosses the 43, and is down at the 42. There's, th there's three plays in a row right here. With one was the pass and two are runs. They've got Cal outflanked when they used that particular defense. They used it a year ago, and it worked against them. And look at Oregon in the fourth quarter. Wow. BYU, number four in the country. They won't be after that. And uh, San Jose State, are they for real? Notre Dame, big, big over Purdue. Michigan, likewise, over the Terps of Maryland. Well, Lou Holtz must have been wondering, when's my team going to get a reader? They got one today. Cal uh, <laughs> jumped, jumped off the side there for a little bit, John Belli, which we were told uh, would probably go about as long as he could at that nose tackle with that sprained arch. Dead ball encroachment defense. First down. Hard to get any traction in there, too, you know, when you're in one of those down line positions, and particularly the nose tackle against a running team where you're getting a lot of, of guard tackle combination double teams on you. You've got to get those feet anchored in the ground and, you know, get a little resistance and get some leverage. And with a bad foot like that, it's difficult to do. Talk about this ground and this playing field. I tell you, it is one of the very, very best in all of football, high school, college, or the professional ranks. First and 10 from the 36 yard line, the Cats are on the move. There's a little counter and whoa! Reggie McGill, I mean to tell you, he was hammered by Red Hall. Red Hall will hit the gap between the center and guard. As you look at it, the center blocking back, the tackle cross going, or the guard going across. Hall takes the spot vacated by the left guard. In this case, uh, Rick Warren, so he just nobody to touch him, and nice play on his part. 15th straight game that Rep Hall has had at least one tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That is an unbelievable streak. Bill comes near side. You'll see Beal coming down, faking the option. Now, pitching back on the, on the turn as the ball is gone. <laughs> they got down in deep with it and caught Cal on a complete overflow with it. A good block by Rick Warren. First down and goal from the Cal line. Beal swings it to the near side and he's cut at the 13-yard line and downed immediately. what it amounted to. They had Joel McDonald, the left tackle, out there to kick out the corner. But a tremendous force played it exactly the way he should. Got the penetration, got by the block of the tackle. Made it virtually a nothing play, but it's important here, Phil, I gotta tell you, for Cal to hope to get out of this for no more than three points. been very, very effective in what is called the red zone inside their opponent's 20-yard line. Nine touchdowns and 14 drives into that area. The clock will stop with 6.04 to play in the first period. Arizona. They play 7-0 Arizona. They have the ball second and 11 and hit immediately as a fullback, Mike Straightney. 
Friday only with 19 carries coming into this ball game. He's a senior fullback out of Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. Was originally the starter. And then Mario Hampton replaced him starting in this particular ball game. They got great depth. Well, they need him because they run so much. Big play for the Bears defensive unit on third down and goal from the nine. Rest assured, Beal will try and get the ball in the air. And he'll probably roll right. Beal coming to the near side in motion. Beal, there's the give right up the middle. It is to straightening again as he lumbers his way to the six, maybe to the five. It is Bill Air, the inside linebacker on the right side. Redshirt freshman who moved up to make the tackle. We talk about filling some big shoes. Don Air trying to replace the shoes left by David Ortega. Yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty not, tough. Not an easy task. That particular play there was uh, the right side of the sprint draw as Beal was running to the right, dealing it off. He ran it to the left earlier in the game, very successfully that time. Cal jumped on it pretty quickly. From the hold of Adam Grand, Gary Custon, who is four of five in the field goal department thus far on the year, will try and let this one go. From 23 yards out. Good snap. Makes good contact and he is right on target. Boston. Now with 232 career points. He is already number four on Arizona's all-time scoring list. Of course, who owns that distinction? None other than Max Sendejas. Wildcats all-time leading scorer. He's got a long way to go. 360 points. Let's pause now to let our local affiliates identify themselves. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week on Prime Network. This is Prime Network. Along with Don Heinrich and Glenn Walker, I'm Bill Stone on a beautiful, balmy fall afternoon here in the Sonoran Desert. We are at Arizona Stadium in Tucson where the Wildcats, they struck on their first possession. And on a 23-yard field goal a moment ago, are out to a 10 to nothing lead. But keep in mind what happened one year ago at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Cal came from behind and it's been this team and the series that they've had at 5-4-2 in ball games where teams match up. that he could not return. Yeah, well, that went behind him. That landed five yards in the back of the back end line. You know, we're talking about the, the fact that this game and the matchup is so good. I think probably more importantly concerning Bruce Snyder and his team is that they've given up over 1,000 yards in the last two football games at 93 points. Wallace on the draw, finds running room behind the left side after the 27 yard line. I have to say one thing about this California Golden Bear offensive line. Ozine, Richard, Steve Gordon, terrific center. Todd Stusick and Ernie Rogers, they've allowed only four sacks of Pulaski all this year, Don. And you look back over the last two years, that Golden Bear offensive line had allowed a total of 75 sacks. I know. They, they have been much, much better. There's no question about it. Plus, better in the running game. The draw once more. Wallace again. He is across the 35-yard line. It's a first down for Cal. Jimmy Hopkins, the outside linebacker, the redshirt freshman from Raleigh, California, on the tackle. Essentially a, a veteran group up there offensively. In fact, Cal had more returning veterans from a year ago than anybody in the conference. They had, I believe it was 17. So, uh, you know, that's a lot of experience in there. Well, that's why when you ask Bruce Schneider or defensive coordinator Ken Bear, what happened to your team this year? Both of them are very puzzled. They're as confounded as everyone. He's got the ball, juggles it out of bounds, but he'll get credit for the reception at the 41-yard line. Todd Burton in the neighborhood. Mike Pulaski really uh, put some smoke on his fastball with that one, and that's why Trakes had to kind of adjust a little bit to it. Trakes leading the conference in receptions. 
And he is a big play guy. He's an impact player that can make things happen. It gets a lot of double coverage. He's going to have to adjust to the different coverages, be it zone or man for man. Coming to the near side is Mike Caldwell. The slot back to give is to Wallace. He is slices across the 43 down the, near the 44. Darren Chase is there to stop him. Right now, Cal in this drive, it's their most effective drive. That first one they fumbled after two plays. But uh, they're doing what Bruce Snyder would like to do, control the football themselves for a change rather than let somebody like Arizona that uh, keeps it away from you. Third down and one. Cal on the year converting 46% of third down opportunities. And I think he got it there. I do too. Pretty good surge by the offensive line. Forward progress will be measured at the 46 yard line, and that's a first down for the Bears. Boy, last week they had 30 first downs, piled up over 500 yards against Washington State, and somehow lost. <laughs> well, that's because Washington State scored 41 points. Greg Zomo. It really was. He fired up in there from his inside linebacker position. Case, not too big. You'll see him right here. Number 50. He, uh, at 220 pounds, as you see the hole open, but, I mean, he closes it so quickly by darting in there, and he's happy with himself. Russell White, the lone setback. Play action coming near side. Pursuit. Velosky delivers a football. Dick Tomey recruited his first year that he was here at Arizona. He recruited Mike Pulaski, and he liked him a lot. And the thing that he liked about him is that he was no prima donna. He said he was a tough sucker. He's tough and honorary, not like most of those quarterbacks. <laughs> he liked that toughness. Well, he has a knee that he's wearing on one, a brace on one knee. Left. White is the tailback. safety as white got through there on the draw we get a perfect picture big hole he comes all the way to this side watch 37 right there as he's come back he's looking at 29 and he also sees hole 37 at the same time Todd Burton was 29 and then of course picks up extra yards oh that's some fancy running Zomo and white are the setbacks that is Zomo just to the right now white moves up into the pro set Pulaski short drop up in the air go that that was a well-thrown football and you don't hear a lot of uh, a roar from the crowd they couldn't quite see how this all happened as Cal has just marched down the field the fade pattern by Mike Poloski laying it up over the top I mean that is a terrific throw to Todd Burton who's got the size on it a little bit of a mismatch, but look at the throw. Way away to the outside. Sean Dawkins, I should say. I, I, I'm sorry about that one, but there's a mismatch. It's, but see how he uses his body to shield Burden there? Slows up just a little bit, giving him a little bit of a cushion. And, of course, Pulaski drops it over the top. Well thrown, well executed. Can't cover any better than that. The point after is perfect by Robbie Keane. And the Bears are on the board with 103 to play on the first period. It is Arizona 10, California 7. Cal, 34 yards passing all on this drive. I know the Bears are 1 and 2, but they're averaging over 27 points a game. Bruce Snyder knows to even his record today. He'll need to accomplish some things Cal hasn't done yet this season. I talked to him earlier. I think what's important for our offensive football team is to establish that we are physical. And the one way you do that is by running the football. Now, we've moved it by passing also, but I think early in the game, I think you have to establish the fact that we can block them and we can run. 
Well, they certainly blocked them, and Russell White ran on the Wildcats on that particular series. Snyder, you look at his career coaching record. He's in 11th season as a head coach, his fourth at Berkeley. And in talking to him yesterday, Don Heinrich, he is pained by his team's inability to pull out the big games against both Miami and last week with the big offensive display, and the defense completely went south. Well, you know, he, he wanted to reestablish the running game, as he mentioned there. They have done that. They're able to move the football, but the defense, which appeared to be one of the strengths of their team, is the one that's been letting them down. Robbie Keane lets it go. Michael Bates, who's going to take it? It is Bates. He is defending Pac-10. Sprint champion and watch him go. Across the 24, and the Wildcats will have the football again. A 23-yard return. Tackled by Jody Graham. Scoring drive for California. They went 80 yards in nine plays. It took them 333 to get there. Let's go down on the sideline now with Glenn Walker. Glenn? Phil, the first two times Arizona's had the football, we saw a couple of gadget plays. They ran the flea flicker on their first series in that reverse option that worked very well. I talked with wide receiver Terry Vaughn. He says they've seen a few things in California's defense. They'll look for a few more trick plays before this one's over with. Back upstairs. All right, Glenn, 55 seconds to play. First period, 10-7, Arizona. In motion, it is Reggie McGill to the near side. That is Beal on the quarterback draw, and it did not fool anybody. John Belli, the nose guard, has that very, very sore foot just clogged up the middle. Nowhere for Ronnie Beal to go. Also with help from Chidi Ahanachi. Well, what they did right at that moment, good pronunciation too, Phil, incidentally. That's very nicely done. <laughs> what they did just before the snap of the ball, they had a shifting of the defensive line, and they moved to the wide side of the field and got into the gaps where Arizona wanted to go with the football. Now they're lining up in those gaps. Like Cornell Collier, like Castle Redmond, they are hitters. And Lawrence Taylor once said, nothing better in the world than a good old-fashioned head-on collision. <laughs> it's it's easy for him to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, the final play of the first quarter of action here from Tucson, Arizona. We're coming back with more California and Arizona in a moment. Seven in white, playing with a lot of pain. He has had a pair of knee surgeries. I'll tell you, the excitement on the defense right now, there's a big change of personnel as Arizona gets ready to punt. But the excitement on the defense right there, I think, is a big lift as far as the Cal team is concerned. I think that kind of permeates through the whole group, both offensively and defensively. This is Josh Miller from the snap of Kenneth McPeters. Cal showing nine men on the line of scrimmage. Back deep it is Brian Trey. Not a particularly good punt at all. But it comes down to the 45-yard line, takes a cow bounce, and is out of bounds. A seven-yard punt. And boy, what that will do to Miller's 43-yard average. Yeah, and more importantly, it's the field position right here as far as Cal is concerned. Now they went 80 yards the last time they had the football. They get them three and out, essentially. Now they got the football at the 41 and a half yard line going in. That is a major lift and a big momentum factor. Randolph and Caldwell to the right. Pulaski gives it the first man through. Look out, there's Russell White. He is inside the 25 yard line and down near the 24. Jeff Hammerschmidt just got him by the ankle and tripped him up. Yeah, that's the first call you've made on Jeff Hammerschmidt, who is really the, the whole ingredient to this bunch of play here. guard but he keeps drifting outside as he broke that way with his speed a good job of reading field vision wise to get there and Hammersmith saved the touchdown it is first down California in motion it is Tolis and give once more it is White and you're not going to arm tackle Russell White as Hammersmith tried and failed Marcel Wade finally brought him down 
Hamner, you're absolutely right. You're not going to arm tackle him. I'll tell you, he has strength and moves, the whole combination. You see him coming left. They start the fullback in front of him just a little early. That's to help get the lead block. See the kickout block right there on number 95, Zeno Alexander, but then White adjusting and then taking it back inside. Anthony Wallace. Straight ahead, Todd Burden, the right corner on the tackle. And California will have it first and goal at the Arizona 9. And a great surge by Wallace in there. Big hole opening up for him. And that's what I said about that field position to get the ball on the 41-yard line. They know they don't have to go too far. And they are running the ball pretty well against this Arizona defensive team that has not been run on successfully this year or consistently. And Cal's doing it. Wallace down inside the five. Paul Glonick, the nose guard, who has slid over to left tackle on the stop. They use him in short yardage uh, pretty much. He has played several spots along the line, but as they move close to that goal line, they get into that goal line defense. Just take a look at these California tailbacks today already. White and Wallace, what a tandem. 99 yards good. Over 200 yards last week in the ball game between them. Keep your eyes on number four. He's got the football and his white busting to the outside and dropped near the two. Hammerschmidt once more. Do you have the feeling Russell White and Jeff Hammerschmidt are going to get to know each other a little better today? Well, well Hammerschmidt was uh, an all pack 10 defensive back, but he missed the last four games with a knee problem. He says he's got a vendetta against Cal. When he, three years ago, he, he muffed a, a, an exchange when he held for extra points that cost him a ball game. He got beat for a touchdown pass last year. to stop the clock. Apparently Pulaski saw something he didn't quite understand and he is over at the near side on the 30 yard line discussing it with Bruce Snyder. So while they take a timeout, we will also 1144 to play in the first half from Tucson as Arizona over Cal by three. with Cal taking the lead, but when you talk about an offensive line doing things right, the back up in front of White, uh, he doesn't, he, he moves a little bit. You'll see White, Tyson Tolles is ahead of him, but I mean, that is good body lean going forward like that. You saw Pulaski coming out of there trying to get the handoff, stumbled and fell a little bit, but it all worked out. Bobby Keane to try and put him ahead by four, and he has got it. Cal, they have run for one, and they have passed for one. And with 11.42 to play on the first half, the Wildcats of Arizona have to be a little bit surprised at what has taken place here on their home turf. They trail Arizona, they trail California 14 to 10. Good surge by the offensive line. That's Hammerschmidt, 15, that overruns it there, just getting an arm on it. We talked about arm tackles not being able to do the job for him. And, of course, it was uh, Wade, Marcel Wade that got run over there to go into the end zone. So that's, uh, that's some tough, hard running out of those two backs. They put up four yards on the ground. I think, what, over 100 yards? We looked at that stat 99 a little bit ago. Here there's 11.42 to go in the second quarter. And Arizona... And the average only gives up 59 a football game. So this Cal team, uh, as Bruce Snyder has said, he is going to put together a running attack, and uh, they're certainly demonstrating it here so far in this football game. Now Robbie Keane will boot this one from the far side, hash mark with about a 15 to 20 mile an hour tailwind. It is Reggie McGill and Michael Bates. Bates, and look at that one sail. Out of the end zone, it goes. There'll be no return. Now, well, California, surprise, surprise. One victory, two defeats here in 1990. The touchdown that put them out in front. It came from two yards away by Russell White, the outstanding sophomore tailback from Crespi High School. 
And a big key play in that drive also was by White. That, that was the six-pointer, but he got one that was nothing in the middle and took it to the outside and got it in deep. First and 10, Arizona, with 11.42 to play in the first half. That is McGill in motion. from McClendock High School in Tempe. Well, Southern California all over Ohio State in Columbus, 35-26. That ball game not even as close as the final score would indicate. There's the surprise of the afternoon thus far. Missouri easily handling the Sun Devils. Nebraska likewise over the Beavers of Oregon State. Second down in five. Just prior to that, two plays in a row the same way. The defensive tackle for California had moved down the line. He had reduced his position, opening a big gap right there. Beal seeing it had the right call on, two in a row, big yardage. First down, Arizona at their own 45. by Chidi Ahanatu, the 6'2", 260-pound sophomore left tackle, and he stayed at home. Well, with this play, and we saw it run earlier, good penetration right there, the right-hand part of your uh, screen, number 72. A good job from the standpoint of getting penetration, but then staying at home, as you said, was the key to the thing by not over-pursuing it and dropped him for a nice loss. Second down in 16. The up back is straight down. Beal comes to your side, looks right down, comes to the right side of the little player. Now it goes to Art Greathouse, and he doesn't get a whole lot. Tackled shy of the 45-yard line by Castle Redmond. You know, I've always thought, from a quarterback standpoint, Ronnie Beal executing there, that one of the most difficult things has to be that in this kind of an attack, that he has an option when the pass is called. That particular play has a back swinging out of the backfield, he has receivers upfield, and he can choose to run. So he has to look upfield, make a determination whether to throw upfield. If not that, run the football. If not that, go to the third guy swinging out, which is what he did. Passing situation, Arizona. Bates goes in motion. The give is right up the middle. It's the fullback, Mario Hampton. And there is nothing there. Maybe a yard. It'll be fourth down in nine. And quite frankly, I can't understand that play selection, Don. You're out at the 45-yard line on third down in nine. Neither could some of the fans. Rick Warren, the offensive left guard, was pulling trapping the defensive tackle of uh, the Cal Bears. They thought they might split one, but, you know, Arizona doesn't throw much anyway, so they're going to play those kind of plays a little better, I think. Josh Miller, his last punt, sailed all of seven, count them, seven yards. This one, a little better. Brian Traggs is going to let it go right by. that big right tackle in Todd Stucy. And I'll tell you what else. When you say big, they are big. But Steve Gordon, the center, who Bruce Snyder feels is as good a center as there is in the country, got some pretty good movement up front. Normally, you don't see maybe a sneak from that position. That ball was set almost inside of the one. They went right at the power of Arizona and picked up some yardage. Franks goes wide right. That is Russell White again. He is out near the seven-yard line. Stopped there by Marcel Wade and Reggie Johnson. I'll tell you right now, the offensive coordinator for Cal has got to be so tempted to want to throw the football, but he knows he has a 14-10 lead at this stage. 
all he's thinking is, I hope we can pick up the first down. We'll play it conservative, but I want to get some area for my putter, figuring that they're going to get us three and out, give him some operating room. And look at the numbers there. Surprising, I think, from a rushing standpoint, that Cal outdoing Arizona at this stage. support in this case the defense and uh, that ball popping up in the air like it did Cal a little bit fortunate that it wasn't picked off let's get credit where credit is due that was Reggie Johnson the right tackle Darryl Lewis had a 74 75 yard return this year already Robbie Key good punt and standing out of bounds straddling the sideline is Darryl Lewis so the Wildcats will have the ball at the Cal 49 yard line following a 47 yard punt. As I was going to say, Phil, and I jumped in there with you, Lewis had one return that was called back, but when I said, whoa, that was in case of mishandling the punt for a moment there, the snap of before the punt, and that could have been a major, major disaster for Cal. Well, I mentioned at the outset of our telecast that punting could play a big part in this game as both the Bears and Arizona play a very, very aggressive punting game. Ronnie Veal, at quarterback for the Wildcats. In motion, it is McGill as the pitch goes to the wide side. That is our great house. He is on his feet to the 44-yard line and down there by Bill Ayer. Bill Ayer, the redshirt freshman, trying to somehow find a way to replace the great David Ortega. And thus far today, he's done a pretty fair job. Yes, he has. And that's one of the better jobs they've done playing that option, despite the fact that they picked up uh, almost seven yards. Arizona's best success has come running the option. Earlier this year, they hadn't utilized it quite as much. Coming in into this game, a little more effective. McGill comes near side. Something Castle Redmond. Great lateral pursuit in getting to the outside to contain Michael Bates. You're right. But he gets his hand on a football, y'all. You just think something's gonna happen. He makes it look like as he comes out there. And the defense coming across. 36 in this case is the adjustment that Cal has made in Cornell Collier to try and play it as a rover back and get that pursuit angle as you saw him there come across for the play. Hampton, the up back, that is McGill back there, as is Michael Bates. Automalizing his veal, and I believe he got the first down, but not by a lot. In fact, it may be closer than we think. Stops the clock with 5.40 to play in the first half. Cal, 14, the 16th ranked Wildcats of Arizona, 10. Pretty good line surge right here as he goes down underneath. Looks like he has. You always get tossed back. If you're underneath that pile, it's it's kind of ugly. People start punching you, hitting at you, and dragging you, pulling you back. And if they'll give you the full spot, and this one uh, is a close spot, quite frankly. I don't know that Arizona got all of the ball on this one. The measurement's going to be most important, as it frequently is. There you got it. Doesn't get a whole lot closer than that, does it, Phil? Couple of inches, room to spare. First down, Arizona. Had a ball away, right? Never a doubt. Dick Tomey knew it. Of course. And Bruce Snyder said, ah, oh, we held him. Come on. Give us a break. There is one class act right there. Bruce Snyder certainly deserves a better fate, but I'll tell you, he went out and he beat Wisconsin back in Badgerland, opened up the 1990 season, and then went back home to Memorial Stadium, had Miami on the ropes in the first half and let him get off. He's got a better team. That's Hampton. Boy, he is grabbed and spun down there at the 39. Dwayne Odom, fourth-year starter. He's been a very, very good player for them. And one thing Cal is doing to the short side of the field as you look at the hash mark or to the Cal bench in this instance, they are taking the defensive end or tackle, whichever you choose to call him, that down lineman, and
and moving him inside so that they get a little more of an old overload to the wide side of the field, anticipating Arizona to run that way and get better pursuit into the play. And that's also where they've been hurt, back to the backside uh, over the right guard. This is Greenhouse, the tailback to the far left of your screen. He has the football. He takes it right up over center. He's got a first down at the Cal 27. And that's exactly where they took it. And that's exactly where that big gap was by moving down with the defensive line. Stay with us at halftime as we present college football today's halftime report. Tony Hernandez brings you all the scores and highlights of today's action. That's college football today's halftime report coming up in just four minutes and 36 seconds. Hampton last year broke his hand the week prior to the Cal game and didn't get the play so he's a little hungry to get a little piece of him here this afternoon if he possibly can. First down, Cass. Beal sprint right now turns it up and old as he gets sandwiched. Was trying to get the ball to Reggie McGill. Well, there again is an example. You'll see him come down the line after the play fake. He's looking to the receiver. He has the choice, run or pass. You see the back swinging out of the backfield there. That's Michael Bates. But they're into the short side of the field, so he can't string it out, giving him more time or buy time to make a decision. As a result, the pursuit drills him. Jan Kyle goes wide to the left. It is second down and eight. And flags fly. That will go against in this case they were starting out to go to the wide side of the field and I, I would suspect at halftime there's 339 to go here in the second quarter Arizona is false start. still second down forced false start by Arizona so they'll get five on that but I would suspect at halftime that they'll make some adjustments assuming Cal continues to play with some overshifts and overloads and in an attempt by Arizona the Wildcats to outflank them in the second half and take advantage of some of the things that they're looking at here because there are some dramatic defensive adjustments being made by Cal specifically with Cornell Collier one of the linebackers uh, giving them almost an extra linebacker three of them uh, when they're on defense and the shifting of the defensive line two big adjustments. Inside the 25 down to the 24. Ron English on the stop. Clock continues to run. We're inside three minutes and five seconds. And he got some good help from the offensive line up in front. The long trap. Rick Ward, the left guard, was pulling. He was kicking out, pulling to his right. Joe McDonald, the tackle, was coming with him and going to move up into the hole. They did not get a whole lot out of it, quite frankly. Cal played it fairly well, but they got enough. They're only looking for three and a third yards at a clip. That gives you first down after three plays. Third and eight, Arizona. Terry Vaughn wide left, and now McGill is on the way to join him. Play action, Beal rolls left. who yesterday, defensive coordinator Kent Bear said, quite frankly, he's not making the big plays. But he did there. And once again, Beal, indecision. Good coverage in the secondary, good pursuit, no place to go. And Collier, with that adjustment, up to make the play. Well done, well executed. Well, he's got good speed. And I'll tell you, with help on that side from Castle Redman on the play, they were able to bring him down now from 43 yards away. He has hit four of five. It's on the way. And it's good. His first field goal from outside the 40-yard line. And that'll stop the clock with 1.47 to play. And the first half, it's Cal 14, Arizona 13. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. A near-capacity crowd has to be somewhat shocked by what they have seen thus far. Arizona went 23 yards on nine plays, but look how long it took them to get there. 5-24, but I'll tell you what, they don't care. They got three points from the toe of Gary Costin, and that is where we stand. As Costin gets set to kick it away, the senior out of Notre Day High School in Santa Ana, California, into a wind, and Russell White should have a return. He's got it at the 11. Russell White, great return, 44 yards to the Arizona 
Well, I'll tell you something. There were some people that touched him, but they couldn't hold him. And he also had some people that didn't see him. Watch 36 right there. Whoop. I mean, he just ran right through that tackle. And then he starts to accelerate here, but gives Cal great field position. 138 to play first half. There is White. Every time he gets the football, he seems to make it happen. A yard, maybe two, as he is dropped by Wade and Case, the team of inside linebackers. No huddle right here. They do a good job of that for a two-minute drill. Clock continues to run. 114. And they had Damian Seaman on the outside. They had the defensive back on the middle. And Pulaski downs it to stop the clock. Well, they have two timeouts available to them. I'm not so sure that I would have wasted it down. You get the clock stopped as you move the chains. So you got a chance to get up there. You have a minute and 10 to go here. You're at the 25 yard line with two timeouts available. I think I would have chosen to keep the down and try and use it effectively. Pulaski thus far on the day, one touchdown. He is four of seven for 55 yards. Big play, though, on that pass. He had two receivers out there, and he had to pick the right one. And motion so long. The give is an Anthony Wallace, and he doesn't get anything. Man, I'll tell you, he ran into Rob Waldrop and Paul Glonick and got nothing. Nothing at all. Sure, now it's third down. See, they used that first down to stop the clock. And you got to wonder why Greg Zomo. I mean, he's doing a nice job, but it's Anthony Wallace and Russell White that have been hurting them. against Washington State caught four passes for 97 yards. Yep. He is a speedster. Yeah, one of them for 58 yards, which is the longest uh, reception of the year here so far for Cal. And now a timeout by Pulaski. So he still has one left. And there's the throw of, of Pulaski to Samian coming in. Samian just on a deep in route, straight down the field and squared it in against a zone coverage. Big hole down the middle. Excellent protection for Pulaski. So he managed on a third and long to pick it up. An extremely important play on Cal's part here, leading 14 to 13, getting ready to go in at the halftime. Now the Pac-10 game of the week returns to the Prime Network lineup on Saturday, October 13th. We're not certain where we're going to be that weekend. We'll be either in Eugene as Oregon takes on Washington or in Corvallis as the Beavers host the Arizona Wildcats. We might even be up in Tempe where the Arizona State Sun Devils will host the California Golden Bears. Check your local listings for the announcement of the teams in your area. We do know one thing. We will be on the air at 3.30 Pacific time. That's the Pac-10 Game of the Week, Saturday, October 13th, right here on Prime Network. Arizona trying to make it four straight here in 1990. They have not beaten California since 1986. The Bears with a one-point lead. Pulaski pumps once, throws on the second shot, and it is out of bounds. Up and over Mike Caldwell's head. And now it'll be second down from the 11th. Fox stops with 35 seconds to play. Good coverage by Mike Parker. Really was nice coverage. He was leaning into him there, taking a, taking away the inside, trying to make an adjustment. And you can't totally understand or see how much velocity Pulaski put on that ball. That was as much a throwaway as it was an attempt to put it into the corner and hope that he might come up with six points. Treggs goes wide to the right, semi and wide left. Pulaski looking for Treggs and he discouraging interception at this point in the football game because you could go up on top with another touchdown. Illegal block below the waist during the return against 
against the intercepting team. Half the distance to the goal line. First and ten for Arizona. The interception will stand, but will move it back halfway to the goal. Well, Mike Pulaski never, ever sees the defensive back. As you see him drop back, firing out to the right side. He has that thing zeroed in all the way. Todd Burden does, and just is waiting for it to be thrown. The eyes of Pulaski took him right to the football. That was just not a good decision, unfortunately. He thought he could squeeze one in there to Damian Simeon. Well, look who made the tackle. Great open field tackle by Pulaski. Well, he played defense uh, in high school as well, and he volunteered for special teams, covered kickoffs last year. Keeps throwing them like that, he'll get practice. That's great. He is picked up behind the line of scrimmage. You know, you can't measure the discouraging aspect of that play as far as Mike Pulaski is concerned. He knows that they've got a sure three points coming up, and he's trying to make it seven, and he just, in his mind, when he comes off the field, he's saying, why didn't I take a little closer look for that safety man? And then they wind it down. You can bet Bruce Snyder will take that lead to the locker room as the clock winds down. The first half is history. It is Cal over Arizona 14 to 13. Now we take you to our studio in Tony Hernandez as he brings you all the scores and highlights of today's action on College Football Today's Halftime Report. Hello, I'm Tony Hernandez back in our Prime Network studios in Northern California. You're watching the Pac-10 game of the week between Cal and Arizona. The Golden Bears leading 14-13. We'll have our halftime report for you in just a moment. Up twice to Arizona, they still have a one-point lead. Time of possession just jumps out and bites you. Well, Cal had excellent field position. They did have the one long drive, but look at those passing yards by Cal. 69, you would expect them to have more yards in the air. The big one, however, Mike Pulaski in the end zone for the touchdown. Now, Arizona, there is Ronnie Field. He staked the Wildcats to their First lead of this ball game. It came early in the first period on a 12-yard run to put Arizona up seven to nothing. Gary Costin came back and booted a 22-yard field goal that gave the Wildcats a 10-nothing lead. And then Pulaski hit Sean Dawkins late in the first period to make it 10-7, following a seven-yard punt by Josh Miller. It was 14 to 10. You talk about that uh, that run by Ronnie Veal. Boy, I'll tell you what, he is a terror at quarterback. Terrific. Look at the quickness here as he gets ready to cut back to the left. See, put on the brakes, let the defender overrun it, and then just get on into the end zone. That is very, very discouraging for the defense. Late first quarter, the Bears got on the board. This is Pulaski. Look at him. Perfect Up in throw. the air, there's Sean Duckins. That made it 10 to 7, and then following that seven-yard punt by Arizona's Josh Miller. Give it to the sophomore. Oh, watch Russell White break through those arm tackles, take it in the end zone. There'll be a lot of linebackers and defensive backs around the conference that are going to be getting that same kind of medicine from him in the years to come. Pulaski, through the first 30 minutes of play, 5 of 10 for 69 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. And he would love to have that interception back. It was not a well-thrown ball. He drilled it right into the arms of Todd Burton. Decision, unfortunately, but there isn't a quarterback around that hasn't made that mistake when he hasn't seen a defender sitting back there and he's so zeroed in on his receiver, so intent that he makes a mistake. Michael Bates standing at his own two yard line as Robbie Keane gets set to boot it away. Bates, he is the defending Pac 10 sprint champion in both the 100 and 200 meter sprint. yard line as we begin the third quarter. And here comes Ronnie Beal. 5'10", 
10 senior out of Fernandina Beach, Florida. And we'll see if they made any adjustments to a couple of uh, situations that Cal has made very obvious on the defense. Cal Arizona undefeated 3-0 on the year. In fact, they've won five straight if you go back to their final two games of the 1989 season versus Cal, though, in the last three years. They are 0-2-1. They had a chance to win the game back in 1987 at Berkeley, and Robbie Keane missed a point after. Well, they started right out with Cornell Collier, who is one of the linebackers, outside linebackers, moved back behind the two inside linebackers of Cal's to put him in that pursuit position. He'll executing the option. They'll come near side. It's great. bouncing football and Kitten could not get to it. And of course it's nice to see him back as you'll see him come down the line. Now that 57 right there is Red Hall. He's got a big outside move on but after the pitch to the outside a missed tackle there you see the hand come in knocking the football away. It's rolling and just does get to the sideline. Hardy could have really made a big play for Cal unfortunately the bounce of the football as they say a gain of nine. It's a first down just took a late at how close Hardy came to getting there. Yes, and that's exactly what Arizona has done, is run away from that overload of the linebacker back to the weak side. They got good yardage out of it. Kerry Vaughn goes to the top of your screen. As the pitch comes to the short side, it is Bates. He has hit behind the line of scrimmage. The first man that, that got to him was Red Hall. One of the things Red Hall has, which all great defensive linemen have, is tremendous quickness and that's what gives him a major advantage you mentioned that streak he had of tackles behind the line of scrimmage he's uh, also had five and a half sacks to go along with that uh, a year ago three and a half sacks this year so he he can beat those tackles a little bit and give them a few few long evenings trying to figure out how to deal with him second down and eight Kyle Jan goes wide to the right Richard Griffith the tight end he is snugged up to the left that is Reggie McGill in motion. The give is straight ahead. himself so open going down the sideline he went to put a move on and, and all he did was run right to his knees but this is something you don't see a Dick Tomey team do very often and that's turned the football over Bates running through there oh that's a trip quite frankly with that hand up there but there's the, the man that causes the the fumble at that point and the good hop in favor of Cal and once again Arizona ran at the weakness of the defense of Cal but unfortunately they lost the football. Last year, the defense would not have been able to return the ball. They would have had it at the point of recovery. A rule change here in 1990 allows the defense to run with it. To the out. And it is incomplete. Pass intended for Damian Simeon. sideline Pulaski but timing aspect he had it going quickly as Sanders happy with that play Inside the post and back up field on it. It's off of the post move. And now he turns up field as Pulaski is looking for him, but too late as you described it there, Phil. Now it is third and ten. Trip wide out to the left. It's Wallace. He's to the four. A brilliant bit of play calling by Bruce Snyder. Bobby Rowland, the last man that 
could get to him, brought him down. An excellent execution. Right side of your screen, draw action. They bring the tackle across. Big daylight as he comes through there. Watch him pick his way. This is an excellent job, really, of adjusting his run to where the defensive personnel are and then making his move in that particular direction. Anthony Wallace, a senior from Altadena, gives Cal a first and goal at the five. Here is Russell White. against Cal. James Richards is jumping up and down. The offensive guard, number 64, really unhappy. I don't know if it's on him or not, but boy, this is a disastrous call at this stage. Against California, a hold for what a ridiculous The hold no came down. after. White was already a yard into the end zone. It really was. Tell you what, there's no doubt James Richards knows it is on him. 6'5, 290 pound senior. Got the rest of his offensive linemen trying to give him a little moral support right here, so it's back to work. Now they're at the 11th, first and goal. where the helmet hits. Bang. Right on his cheek. Yeah, right him on the chin. And Lewis is still down. Reggie Johnson also came into the pile there a little late, but it was the initial sting. You aren't going to see many quarterbacks put people down. So he's okay. He's on his feet. He got his bell rung a little bit there. Kind of wondered where that left hook come from. Four interceptions on the year. Two last week against Musgrave. He is number two in the nation in interceptions, and Pulaski will pull the hat back on and go again, this time on second down and goal from the three-yard line. Well, I think it's a good bet that if you keep your eyes on number four in the backfield and White will be watching the football. I think you're right. Pitch to the wide side. Watch him stretch out at the end. Drops his shoulder. Big time. See him stick that left arm out with the football trying to get up the pylon. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Touchdown, California. Look at all the pushing and shoving going. And there's a perfect example of some of the Cal players running in to try and calm it down a little bit. But there's an example of the quarterback on the sneak as Snyder's waving his players back. Getting a little bit carried away here. Two guards moving out. Nice surge, but it's really the center. He didn't take a side. He went right behind Steve Gordon, the 270-pound junior that Bruce Snyder says, I don't have seen a better center in this conference or in the country. Robbie Keane. He'll try and make it 21-13. Stop the clock with 12 minutes and one second to play in the third quarter. Oh my, California now by eight. California 21, the 16th ranked Wildcats of Arizona 13. 
And there's a man who has to be somewhat concerned, Dick Tomey. Oh, his Wildcats off to a 3-0 start, trying to make it 4-0 for the first time since the 86 season. There is Bates, and he's coming out. For the 23, and down there. Scott Robinson, number 43 on the tackle. On their first possession of the third period, they went 30 yards in seven plays. It took them 119 to get there. And their quarterback went a yard right behind his big, tough center, Steve Gordon. Set up by the Buffalo. Do you think the turnovers don't hurt? They do. Well, the Golden Bear likes what he's seeing right now. Makes in motion. Boy, Michael Bates went across the 40-yard line, and if he'd have yelled, he'd have heard an echo. Nobody was around him. <laughs> That's a great line. I like that. In one of these canyons here in Tucson. That's right. But you're absolutely right. It was actually pretty well played as far as the defense line and linebackers were concerned to sort of keep the contain on field. Second down and nine, Arizona. The 24. Bill comes near side on the option. It is lassoed at the 26. Fumbles the football, and who's got it? They may call Beal down at the 26. It was actually picked up by Red Hall after Castle Redmond leveled him. And they're going to rule it down. Little hand fake there to the back coming in and then turning up field on the option. No question he wasn't going to pitch it. He was going to run. But as he's kind of carrying the ball loosely, you can see it there. He is down when the ball comes out. But he was carrying it a little bit, uh, as they used to say, like a loaf of bread. you got to squeeze it and put it away. Kyle Jan goes wide right. Terry Vaughn is wide to the left. Now out of the eye. It is McGill in motion. Out to Reggie. To see John Hardy out of the corner of his eye. Great coverage by the left corner out there. John Hardy, the six foot senior. One, two, three, punt for Arizona. So it was just that kind of play that Hardy intercepted and took down the sidelines against Wisconsin for a touchdown. Another step or two closer, that swing man, he would have picked that one off. Look at Miller's average today 29.5. His first punt, seven yards. Cal looks to be rushing 10. Now they drop a man off the line. High spiraling punt. Fair catch at the 32. It is Treggs. A 42-yard punt. Clock stops with 10-15 to play in the third period. Cal will have the football. You're watching the Pac-10 game of the week. Clock running. Big, six foot. He goes 200 pounds, but he's got the thighs of an Earl Campbell. Yeah, and the late drive and the body lean as Jeff Hammerschmidt pulled him down. You said run, and he is doing it. Hammerschmidt, the Bronco Nagurski Award. Look at those numbers rushing the football, and that's given to the, the top player that plays both ways if need be, which he has done. White's got it again. This time to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Mike Parker closes in to make the stop. And now a flag comes in from way over from in, Cal, uh, in front of California's bench. That flag was thrown about 15 yards. And 15 minutes late. That's against Arizona. Yeah, it is. But I often wonder how an official that's 50 yards away can throw a flag like that when one that's right on top of it doesn't make a call. Dick Tomey not happy. That's one of the things he emphasizes is not to get penalties and turnovers that are going to cause you problems, hurt you in the course of a game as the officials explaining it to him. In this game, they've had a couple of turnovers and here a uh, personal penalty. Personal foul against Arizona. 15 yards from the end of the run. 
first down. Boy, oh boy, those will kill you. You're down by eight. The play is over on the far side of the field, and you're taking a pop at somebody. Yeah, that is absolutely foolish. There's a lot of time in the football game, too. You should get all that excited this early in a ball game. to play third quarter. There's Russell White and he has tripped up. Boy, Darren Castle, a nice job of taking White's legs out from under him. Arizona now five penalties for 52 yards and two of those five have been personal fouls. Well, you know when you teach aggressiveness, which Dick Tomey wanted out of this football team, you're going to get a little bit more of the late hit type of things. But that doesn't mean he encourages it because he certainly does not. He is a true Second down and seven. Here's a little swing pass to Russell White. You let him get to the open field and he can make you pay. Well, I'll tell you, that quieted this crowd. You heard nothing from them, but you talk about the right call at the right time. A blitz was on. They had a screen out to the left side, executed absolutely perfect, got the lineman in front of it. There wasn't a lot of pursuit from the inside. As you take a look here, watch the people move to the right side of your screen. Now you'll see him out in front of White as he'll cut back to the left side, and all the pursuit is that way. Puts a little juke move on there, a missed tackle there. Two arm tackles don't work, and bang, in the end zone. Gaines point after is good. And now with 8.35 to play in the third stanza, California 28, the undefeated Wildcats 13. Now well, there have certainly been some surprises in college football today. As you look at this pass from Pulaski to White once more. Well, you'll see White drifting out there. Pulaski brought him in nicely. You saw those black jerseys on him. See him working his way now. White, in this case, back to the right side. There's a missed tackle. There's a little piece of him, even though he's out legging him at that stage. So Burden and Lewis, Lewis, an excellent tackler with good speed, couldn't pull him down. White goes into the end zone. And this is a team, Arizona, that gives up an average of just 14 points a ball game. Cal has put up 28 so far. Yeah, they also are used to getting up about 73 yards on the ground. And so far today, Cal has doubled that total. They're up over 160 yards on the ground against this very, very stingy Wildcat defense. Today, it has not been so much the ineffective play of Arizona, Don, I don't believe, as much as it has been a superb offensive and defensive meshing of the Golden Bears gears. Well, you're right, Bill. And as Bruce Snyder it said he made a pledge to this football team and to the Bear followers that they were going to be a better running offensive football team. And they have certainly demonstrated it here this afternoon. He lets it sail. And that is Bates. Five yards deep. He's going to come out again. something happening in himself. He's got the speed. He hits the crowd there at the wedge, bounces off, stays on his feet, does a full 360, turns the afterburners on. The kicker is going to come across, Robbie Keane, to finally make the play. And Bates says, hello, with the little left forearm there. That will be heard at the same time. No yardage. First down. Well, George Mabaulu has come in to try and spark these Wildcats of Arizona. He comes in to replace Ronnie Veal. Malaulu, only one of seven in the passing department this year. Last year versus Cal, suffered the knee injury that put him out for the year. Only attempted seven passes this season. Up across the 44-yard line goes Art Greathouse, and it's that trip ends 
as he runs into a Mac named Mac Travis <laughs> or Mac Truck. <laughs> well, I don't know what's going to come out of this particular series of plays for Arizona State, but I'll tell you one thing. There was a renewed intensity by the offense there on that first play. The lines fired out. The running back, Great House, hit it in there harder. Second down and six from the I formation. The pitch goes. Now it's coming this way. A little pitch pass. Terry Vaughn has got it. A little razzle dazzle. As you'll see, Malaulu, the step up there by Vaughn and back, a one man screen. Malaulu firing it out to him. Looking to make a miss there with that little juke on Ray Sanders. How nicely done. There's Malaulu as he fires it out there, the left-hander. Meantime, one of the offensive linemen to tackle this is Joe McDonald gets out in front to throw a block in order to spring on. First down for the Cats at the 37-yard line of Cat. They're down 28-13. Malaulu is grabbed at the ankle and spun down by Rep Hall. A flag is down right into the interior of the line it went. Great penetration. Mac Travis, I think, felt that he was being held, but he had a hard slashing move to the inside. The right guard is Finian Ganofu, 332 pounder. Nice tackle there by Finian. And of course, the play is stopped, and they're given the options to Cal. Holding offense will be accepted. Replay first down, first and 20. It's been an interesting ball game. Twelve different receivers have caught passes. Six by Arizona, which you don't expect, and six by the Bears, which you do. That's Vinian Ganofu that you're looking at, number 61. Vince Smith alongside of him. He's 343, so you got the right guard at 332, the right tackle at 343. I don't know where they get him. Look at that. We're talking some big folks here. Vincent Smith. Boy, they grow them big in Louisiana. Out of, pardon me, he's out of Los Angeles. Lock High School, as a matter of fact. you got to wonder, a guy that big, or any people in that position, why would you ever have to hold? You'd block the sun out. <laughs> First down and 20. There goes McGill to the top of your screen. Yes, he did. And a good adjustment by Malahulu to look out to the right side and then come back down the middle. Now, he really can't see with those hands up in front of his face and 48 cutting in front of him. He anticipates where Bates is going to be, and he thinks it's in there. He thought it was a completion. Can't do too much better than that, and Bates did not hang on to it. Now it is second and 20. Cal going with a nickel defense. here because the, the, the defensive backer there the linebacker Cornell Collier made him made him wait for a moment but when he did make the choice they picked up big yards down that sideline it was a foot race and a nice saving tackle by Wilson now they're looking over Borland's right knee and you barely saw it as Malaulu pulled away from Moreland Moreland the center it appears that somebody from Cal came back Borland is up now and he's going to try and walk off and boy I tell you he was filling in himself for Paul Toppelmeyer, who was out with a bad ankle sprain. Yeah, so they're hurting in that offensive center position. And it'll be interesting to see who's going to handle the snapping chores now. Well, apparently Toppelmeyer has gone in, ankle sprain and all. Well, he comes from good stock. His brother currently playing pro ball, who had been a four-year starter here himself, uh, and not too far back. But the intensity of this ball game, Phil, 6.30 to go, has increased significantly. Nothing up the middle, maybe a yard. 
Yeah. Clock running, 6.15 to play third period. A little bit surprising to run that particular play inside over the left guard tackle when you just mentioned about Topelmeyer having a bad yeah, ankle to begin play. with. But it, the execution and the exchange, I think, was a problem. It is, as we get a look at it. But surprisingly, I don't know, were they going to play the old fumble ruski there or something? Because Malamulu went right through the bank <laughs> like he had the football that's laying on the ground. Wait a minute, you can't go anywhere without the rusty. Flags are down. Everybody was moving. I got a feeling everybody on the Arizona offensive line was still laughing. <laughs> well, and the Cal guys are saying, where's the football? I mean, everybody was fooled on that one, <laughs> including Malamulu. <laughs> Dead ball, false start, offense. I want to know. I want to know if Dick Tomey's going to put this play on their highlights. See that? This year. Down Look on at the that. ground. Uh huh. See number number 60. I'm not sure who's going to pick it up. Rick Warren looked like he was getting ready to pick the ball up. He can't get in to get the football. It's a big pile of bodies down there. When I say big bodies, with that right side of this Arizona team, both of them well over 300. Oof. And penalties have hurt. They have hurt the Wildcats dearly. Wide to the right is Bates. by Ray Sanders getting a hand in there. Ball thrown just a little bit late. But that was an excellent job throwing the football. See him step inside there and use that left hand. In the meantime, keeps his right hand off of him. That is absolutely terrific. <laughs> Ray Sanders. Oh. What a nice play on his part. That's picture perfect. Now third and 15. I tell you, he didn't pay any attention. He was so locked in on that football. They had a blitz coming from the outside. They show the, the coverage all the way. Watch right down the middle of your screen. All the operating room. That's what Malulu sees. But look at that nice play by Sanders once again to get the left hand in, keep the right hand off. This went from 41 yards away. Are they going to fake it? Gary Costin. He's got one from 43. He's going to let it say. to play in the third quarter and now it's Cal by 12 28 to 16. Their 16th ranked Wildcats being handled by California to the tune of 28 16 with 5 16 to play in the third quarter. There is Russell White. They went 35 yards on eight plays, capped by Gary Custins, 41-yard field goal, and it's now a 28-16 game. Glenn Walker is down on the sideline. Glenn? Phil, we saw Dave Borland helped off the field, the starting center for Arizona. He told me he pulled a medial collateral ligament in his right knee. It's on ice right now. He says maybe he can get back in this ballgame. They can surely use him. Back upstairs. There's no doubt about that, Glenn Walker. is Koppelmeyer is banged up as well. The give is the white. Fifteenth ranked Ohio State knocked off by Southern California, Arizona State manhandled by the Tigers of Missouri, Nebraska all over the Beavers. No surprise there. That one I am very shocked by. Colorado over the Huskies. It was Oregon knocking off the fourth ranked Cougars of BYU 32 16. We have got a good one here. White, big pull, right side. And he is down at the 26. Jeff Hammersmith moves. 
comes up to bring it down. Other scores around the nation today. It was San Jose State over Stanford. Boy, oh boy. Denny Green not happy. Notre Dame finally gets an easy one as they knock off the Boilermakers. Michigan doing a number on Maryland. It was Virginia. Close game early. Then they just blew by William and Mary. Oklahoma by the Kansas Ball Club, 31-17. and penetration by the defenders, particularly the linebackers right there. Good surge by the upfront people for Arizona. Keen to kick it away, and oh, does he get a good one. Fair catch by Lewis at the 30-yard line. <laughs> on the run with it. Well, the Wildcats will have the football at their own 30-yard line. Other scores around the nation today. I want to tell you, upsets have abounded and we've got one here it was Florida over Mississippi State 34 to 21 Clemson 19th in the nation by passing Duke Georgia Tech over the Gamecocks 27 to 6 it was West Virginia over the Panthers 38 to 24 and what is wrong with Pitt this year well it's hard to say because that is another big upset here with 318 to play in the third period it is Cal by 12 battle cry here in Arizona since way back in 1926 has been bear down. Dead ball, false start, offense. You know, you see the big in a three point stand. The big letters bear down out there in the center of the field. It has absolutely nothing to do with the Golden Bears. Back in 1926, the Arizona quarterback, Button Salmon, was killed as a result of an auto accident. But on his deathbed, he told his coach, Pop McHale, to tell his teammates to bear down for the rest of the season. And his Really been the battle cry here at Arizona since way back in 1926. In fact, their old basketball gymnasium used to be called Bear Down Gym, and it still stands here. Now to cross the 29 near the 30-yard line. It is Mario Hampton. Lock running 305-304-28-16 Cal. It is second down in Arizona. Arizona exactly where you want them. You want them to have to put the ball in the air. Flags fly. And Malaulu flies to the turf. And Chidi Ahana, too, was uh, jumping across there. And then I think the Toffelmeyer tried to snap the football to catch him offside. And I'm not sure whether they're going to get an illegal procedure or an offside call. It could go either way here against either team. Offside defense will be accepted. Oh, what a move by Paul Toppelmeyer. The junior center who had to come into the ball game because of the knee injury to Dave Borland. He saw somebody jump and snap the ball. Well, you see that's Honatu there that hopped across trying to get back. And that's what you teach centers is to bring that ball up if you see somebody moving across. Now, that was a little bit removed from him, so that's pretty good peripheral vision. At the top of your screen, the three-back offense for California. George Malaulu is at quarterback replacing Ronnie Beal, and it is Malaulu with the football. He turns the corner and is grabbed at the ankles. Boy, what a tackle by Castle Redmond. And Art Greathouse was on the outside just begging to have the ball pitched to him because in that instance, Cal did not play that particular option like they played some others. And as a result, Greathouse had running room out there. There's nobody to pick him up defensively. Now it is third and three. A big, big play for the Wildcats of Arizona. And if Cal can hold, they'll get the football with a minute and 40 to play in the third quarter.
rather than pitch, and you'll see number three out in front of it, he could have, but he felt that he had enough to get the three yards. And of course, draws a big crowd in a hurry, and then uh, one of the Cal players gave him a little extra shove as he was getting up off the pile, and that was what the booing from the crowd was. They thought a flag should have been thrown. You know, Malaulu, when he went out last year against these Bears at Memorial Stadium, he was leading the Pac-10 in passing efficiency. That's McGill in motion. Malaulu gives to Great House, and he is banged at the line of scrimmage by Redmond. been around or in the action all day long. Yeah, he has. And look at that good leverage position as he stings him there. Didn't exactly knock him backwards, but you saw his head snap a little bit. He knew that he got kissed. Inside a minute, 40 seconds to play, third quarter. Malolo wants to put it up now. Going for it all. Michael Bates, and it is way overthrown. It appeared as if Bates wanted to run the stop and go. Malolo had, he had the flag pattern called. Yeah, a little miscommunication. That, that's a tough throw on his part, though. They were going all the action of the play to Malu's left, which was good because he's a left-hander. But then he had a stop and throw across field back to the right side. I think as much as anything, even though there was miscommunication, he wasn't going to take a chance of putting that ball inside where it could be intercepted. There were a couple of defenders. He just really humped it out there and pretty much threw it away. Now third and nine caps. Wildcats 28 to 16. We're coming back. Done it a couple of times. And then Russell White scores his second touchdown of the game and his sixth of the season. White with two. Poston has three field goals for the Wildcats. So as we head now for the final 15 minutes of play, Arizona has going to be going uphill. First and ten. Wildcats. George Malaulu replaced Ronnie Veal midway through the third period. Since then, Arizona has showed signs of moving the ball through the air. This would be for the Bears as they head into the remainder of this 1990 season. Boy, Bruce Snyder, he's got to be saying to himself, where has this effort been all year? <laughs> well, he can look back, and he went against two passing teams in Miami and Washington State. That's what caused him the problem. Bates goes in motion. And there is going to be illegal procedure. It was Rob Flory, the right tackle. You know, they caught two teams with really premier passing quarterbacks that hurt this Cal football team. Start, offense, still second down after a five-yard penalty. You know, and part of the thing that happens, too, Phil, when you play a team like that that can score fairly quickly, 
as those two teams can. It takes you out of the rhythm of the football game that you want to execute, and that is Cal running the football. And we've seen when they've been close like this, they're able to do what they want to do in terms of getting their two premier running backs in there and throwing uh, to sort of a, a, accompany that. The sun begins to break out here as evening begins to set over the Sonoran Desert. It is second down in 14. Play action, Malaula rolls right. Dropped by Air and John Hardy. Well, again, the play action look, and he comes out clean into the flat. Ball a little behind him, but uh, good hands there to turn around and get it, and four Cal players jump on him. One thing that Cal has done throughout this football game, they have shown the coverage in the secondary. And whatever combination they're going to use, whether they're going to double cover the outside, conventional zone, you name it, they've placed their people out there well in advance of the play so the quarterback can get a good long look at it. It's a help to a quarterback. Arizona has thrown to seven different receivers today. Going into this ball game, they only have averaged eight passes a game. Yes, and what they're doing, as Dick Tomey told us yesterday, we don't want to throw because we have to, and right now they virtually have to throw the ball. Uh, but, but they want to be able to dictate it. We're coming back 13-13 to play here from Arizona Stadium. It's Cal by 12. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week. identify themselves. You're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week on Prime Network. Watching home team sports, the channel you cheer for. That's all his teammates that are patting him on the head and hugging him at this point. Watch in the backfield. You'll see that jersey and headgear start way out in front of everybody else and just wrap them up. But what a big play, and the crowd was booing. They didn't like that, that particular call. One of the players are down on the field. Can't quite tell. It looks like an Arizona player, but that is a key time where everybody pretty well bunched inside that the option is most effective. But in this case, they had George Malahulu, who doesn't run it quite as well as Ronnie Veal in the ball game. And it looks like it's the outside linebacker. Yes, it is. Cornell Collier. He's yes. all right. Yeah, and he's the guy that's been playing in that what you might call rover position throughout the ball game against Arizona and also flew up into that pile. But it was really Mac Travis that made that play. Excellent job. Here come the Bears of California, 12.30 to go. the top. Brent Woodall, tight end, had it right smack on the numbers. Good job by Pulaski. Arizona getting a little bit uh, anxious right now with 12.26 to go. They had seven people coming in the blitz that time. Pulaski read it and went to the pass. The quick little look into the tight end would have been good for about three or four yards, but they dropped it. really made the play was Bobby Rowland, the strong safety. He came across in penetration on the pitch, forcing him back to the inside. Here's a good example of the linebacker in pursuit. In this case, Mike Parker making the play, but it was really that safety that forced it inside so he could make it. Coordinated defense. Chip wide outs to the bottom. Johnson, I believe, 
force the trajectory of Pawlowski's pass a little more vertical than he might ordinarily have wanted. Yes, and the, the defensive backs really did an excellent job coverage-wise out there. Nobody really came open very clean, and that's a group that Dick Tomey thought was really the best group of defenders he's had in the secondary since he's been here. Joaquin is at an excellent day, averaging just over 42 yards. Darrell Lewis, I tell you, he has yet to break one this year. Good, high, spiraling punt. Lewis at the 19. He had returned one earlier this season, 75 yards. It did not count. If it could be more timely right now, they're 3-0, and but they're struggling to try and win a fourth game, trailing 28-16. Lewis brings them back to excellent field position. Had Michael Bates gone upfield in front of Lewis and put a block on the punter, Robbie Keane, Lewis would have broken it. Let's go down to the sideline now and Glenn Walker. Glenn? Well, that was a big play there by Mr. Lewis. Now, the California team, their coaches have told the office, we need you to get the ball, hold on to it, keep our defense off the field, give them a break. They didn't do that. Three downs and outs. That's not what they want. They got to, if they're going to win this ball game, they need to get the ball and hold on to it. The Arizona offense continues to control the ball, and that keeps them in the ball game. They still got a chance to win this one. Indeed, they do. There is a California Golden Bear hurt down at the 15-yard line, and the medical staff is helping him up. We still can't get a it's limping a little. Now bit. he's okay. Yeah, he's kind of trot Jody off Graham. The field. He's a freshman reserve corner. A 42-yard punt by Keene, a 42-yard return by Lewis. Well, Lewis started as a running back when he first came yes. here in 1987, so switched to defense. Uh, he's no stranger to packing that football. And there was a nice job on his part to pick his way, and Keene saved the touchdown, like you mentioned. The right block there, the choice of the blocker, would have uh, made the difference. show up on radar at Sky Harbor Airport he came close <laughs> well he came out of nowhere as he's moving across there because Greathouse had some daylight on the little pitch with the lead block up in front of it but uh, Reggie McGill number eight there leading it but you saw saw Hardy just come flying through there to make the play
will be much, much more beautiful for Wildcat fans if the Cats can somehow come back and grab a lead with 10 minutes and 25 seconds to play. It's Cal by five. And both return men at about the seven-yard line. I tell you, I don't know how they could execute it that perfectly. He hooked it out to the left or put some little bit of English on it to the left side. And then the end man on the line will go up and catch it in the air. It's travel. Look at him go up high to catch that football. He's got it. And then he drops it because he's anticipating the hit. And that's absolutely amazing. That was Richard Holt, the strong safety, normally on the end man on the line there that caught the football, did a good job of going up for it, but then didn't quite put it away in anticipation of getting hit. They weren't that close to him, but the execution, unbelievable, and I'm quite surprised that Arizona would go for it uh, this early in the football game. It looks like now, however, they're going to say that it did not Wait a minute. go enough. It's going to go again. Not, the call is offside. They kick. The ball was already marked ready for play. The ball was not marked ready for play. They kicked oh. it before the whistle sounded. Unbelievable. And what a break for Arizona. Oh, and a I bad guess. break for Cal, where they'd have had it at midfield. <laughs> well, see some strange things happen, don't you? Yeah, I, what a call that was by the official, or no call. I'm not sure which and when. It's a good, it bet, uh, late. good bet Costin is going to put this one deep. Yeah, I would think so once. I noticed that both the uh, deep people were considerably closer, even though he hasn't been thumping them into the end zone. Now they're at the 20-yard line, so Cal still should get good field position. Boston is calling the play now, and you'll watch the Cats kickoff team spread out. And now Cal counters by backing up. White and Semyon retreating to their own 10. And over in. Taken by Marty Holly. No, it goes out of bounds, and they'll back him up farther and make him kick again. Well, you know, you mentioned, Phil, about the kicking game, uh, particularly in the punting, which has not been good by Arizona. And there again, that's something that well, a lot of coaches stress, but Dick Tomey puts a little more emphasis on it than, than some other coaches in the conference. Here, not only the punting, but the kickoff part of the kicking game is creating some major problems in the fourth quarter here. So that the punting and the kickoffs uh, are going to end up being a major factor, regardless of the outcome. Yeah. And there's the, the numbers there on Art Greathouse. Art got a uh, an extra year. He played the first two games a year ago. Only took a minute and three, but as he rolled into that end zone, he, he had a, some bone spurs on his heel, and the conference allowed that he was not wasting last year. So he picks up an extra year, and what a nice addition to this group of excellent running backs. For the third time, the Cats have been trying to put the ball in play. Now you, you wonder if maybe, just maybe, there is a method to Dick Tomey's madness here. Yeah, the method is that I want the ball at the other end of the field. I want you to stop him, get him three and out, and give us a chance. If you don't like backing up. His guy isn't going to put it up in the bleachers. Holly and Russell White back inside their own 20. As Custom. Go. This time he's going to hit a squibber. It's taken at the 35-yard line. Coming to the near side across the 44, out near the 45, and bouncing out of bounds goes Bill Ayer. He's a linebacker. He's used to touching that football. Yeah, but he's used to being the hitor rather than the hit. <laughs> you know, this series, Don, has had a real oddity. And that is the visiting team scored a better record in games played here. Cal leads the series four to two at Berkeley. Arizona leads it. Two wins, a tie, and two losses. Tranks and Sammy, the wide out. Play action, Kowalski. Under throws the coverage. No. Brent Woodall, the backup tight end, and a 
didn't get there. Well, the Pac-10 Game of the Week returns to Prime Network lineup on Saturday, October 13th. Now, we're not sure exactly where we're going to be that weekend. It depends a lot on the conference race. We'll either be in Eugene as Oregon takes on Washington in Corvallis as the Beavers host the Arizona Wildcats, or right up the road in Tempe, where Arizona State Sun Devils will take on these Golden Bears of California. Check your local listings. The one thing we do know, it will be coming your way at 3.30 Pacific time. Polusky, he's rolling right, throws, intended for Simeon, and he's knocked away. Jeff Hammerschmidt, boy, what a shot he put on Simeon. Yeah, and Hammerschmidt didn't go for the football. Another step, he might have picked that off. He was going to go for the hit. You'll see him 15, dead center in your screen. time but I'll tell you Bruce Snyder's troops have come in in here and they have really played hard against the Wildcats. Now I want to remind you that on October 13th it will be Oregon at Washington Arizona at Oregon State or Cal right up the road of peace in Tempe. Again it is October 13th game time is 3.30. confusion in the secondary for Arizona. Arizona went into the full blitz, which forced a man-for-man -man coverage. As a result, the tight end was being played man-for-man -man on a crossing pattern, and it looked like Todd Burton, who is normally a corner, was kind of confused as to where to be because he was so wide open. First and ten bears. That's Wallace. He's hit at the 40 and dropped at the 39 by Paul Glonick. Bruce Snyder told us last night that in this game today, Don, that his Bears could simply not afford to self-destruct in critical situations. It doesn't get much more critical than they are right now. Up by five, final quarter, 9-22 play, and they own the ball. Yeah, they lost points just before the half on that interception. He doesn't want anything like that. Second and seven. Traggs can't get to him. Yeah, well, he reneged on that football. He was going in there, was laid out in front of him, and there's Bruce Snyder, and he knows it. Now, Traggs is not particularly big, 170 pounds, if he is that. I was talking with him last night. So I can appreciate that uh, he'd be a little bit reluctant, particularly with Jeff Hammerschmidt. They don't call him the hammer for nothing waiting in there. But you've got to go. I'd consider him a sophomore, but he hasn't played any. You go to him in a crucial, you'll see him come from the right side of your screen. The other two receivers cleared it out. Oh, I would be more inclined to go with Brian Tranks, but that was Daryl Lewis that was covering him, got caught up in the traffic back there. However, just a turnover now. Running it away. Cal's got to give it away. Key 
Puts it straight up in the air. Smart move. Bear catch at the 20-yard line. Lewis, he has got the ball, and here comes the offense of the Wildcats. Well, the one thing going for Arizona, Don, they're a ground-oriented team. They like to grind it out, and they've got plenty of time to do it. Well, the rushing defense of Cal has been pretty good, quite frankly, and you look at the summary on Ron Veal, and that was in the early going. Followed by Gary Costin's field goal from 22 yards away to make it 10 to nothing. And then Cal got things rolling. Poloski to Sean Dawkins from 20 yards away. And then Russell White from two yards away, breaking a couple of arm tackles. Gary Costa then came on to kick a 43-yard field goal to bring Arizona to within one in 14-13. And then in the third quarter, it was Pulaski on the quarterback keeper to make a 21-13. And then White, his second touchdown of the day, that made it 28-13. Costa to make it 28-16. And then Greathouse from 11 yards out. And that is where we stand. Out of the 34-yard line goes Greathouse. Well, Greathouse averages a little over five yards a carry. And by virtue of the way they alternate their running backs. They're generally pretty fresh coming in there as it looks like, like one of the Arizona players is hurt. Yeah, in the meantime, the, uh, the offensive coach is talking to the Cal offensive people. That is Art Greathouse, who is on his back. Now, he is just one of the great group of running backs that Dick Tomey has. You look at the tailback, the, the running backs they have, Greathouse. How about Michael Bates, Mike Streitnick, the fullback. Mario Hampton has seen the ball. The only guy we haven't seen with a football in that backfield is Lamont Lovett, the redshirt freshman out of Los Angeles. But then, out at wide receiver, Kyle Chan and Terry Vaughn, the tight end. We've seen Griffith in ball. And not to mention a guy by the name of Reggie McGee, McGill, pardon me. I mean, they have such a, a vast array of offensive weaponry. Well, there's Great House's numbers over seven yards of carry. So they will miss him, and I suspect he might be back. He doesn't look like he's hurt too badly. And you're right, they have a tremendous number of skilled people in all of those positions. Good depth. And probably a big part of that is the fact that normally they play in such hot weather here, they need to rotate a lot of people. That's a good point. Very, very good point. 8-19 remaining. Second down and seven, Arizona. They're down by five. Hampton and Bates to the running. Pursuit by Red Hall. Yeah, and once again, the guy that made it happen. Second time they've used that play, David Wilson, the corner. You'll see him come flying into the picture, which causes the receiver to have to adjust back. See him fly in there. He might miss the tackle, but he caused him to come back to the inside where all the pursuit is coming from. Now third and three. Oh, what a big play for Arizona. Short side of the field, Bates. down at the 38. Who is it against? I think it might be Arizona on a hole behind the play, but once again, tremendous penetration right there. That number 36 is Cornell Collier, the linebacker that's had the adjustment to moving side to side in pursuit, playing what you might Holding say out of position. On the offense, the penalty is refused. Fourth down. Now it puts Arizona into a seemingly punting situation with Josh Miller coming on. I might explain by out of position. Normally he's out on the end of the line. And so here he's in the middle. Now the punt team must need to get in. They don't get too many men in the field. Cal calling a timeout. Smart move. Excellent move by Cal. Man, they had more players running on and off the field than they had on the bench. And what you have to question here, though, is that Cal should see or at least recognize that Arizona had gotten their punt team out there. Now, so Cal wisely calls a timeout. It comes with 7.30 to play. Don't you dare go away. 28-23. Arizona forced to give the football up with 7.30 to go. And it is Josh Miller who will try and get his foot into this ball. It's a beauty. Trek 
spelling for the Bearcats. California, led by Mike Pulaski. A year ago at Memorial Stadium, they trailed Arizona 21 to nothing and came back and won it. Today, here at Arizona Stadium, they trailed 10 to nothing and they're leading right now. Let's go down to the field where Glenn Walker is. Glenn? Well, Phil, the clock is beginning to wind down here for Arizona. They just lost one of their offensive weapons. Art Greathouse, the running back, you saw him lead the game. They won't tell me what's wrong. It's probably his ribs or his sternum. They have wrapped him with ice and an ace bandage. So he looks like he is out of the ballgame. Back upstairs. Thank you, Glenn. Calling signals, coming to the near side. It is White. Boy, look at him pick his way. Looks like he's skipping through a minefield, dropped by Ty Martin. It really does. And you know the great backs do that. Watch him adjust his speed as he's looking upfield where to go. Sets up a blocker, steps inside of that block. See him slow down, come back inside. Nothing there. And slides back outside. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere, and he picks up six yards. Second down and four. Boy, look at Russell White. 65 last week, 95 this week. He is really starting to assert himself in that offense. And he's only a sophomore. Yeah, well, you know, they, they talked about it as far as not wanting to bring him on too fast and make too much uh, out of his joining the ball club. So he's kind of had to earn his way out. Bruce Snyder has just really respected him for it. Oh, he runs head on into Paul Glonick and Jimmy Hopkins. That's the first time today that they've really stiffed him on the spot. Russell White, boy, he was all everything in high school at Crespi High. 94 career touchdowns in high school. Unbelievable. He did not play last year as a freshman as he had to, to get eligible, as they say, academically. So he missed football so much, Don, he went out and played an intramural game. for Caldwell, but once he stumbled, he could not get his balance back to unload. I know, he was really unhappy with himself that he couldn't get under control because they had a chance on that sideline pattern. They wanted to use some time. Now, 6-10 to go, they're having to give that football back. Well, Arizona, they have blocked 34 kicks over the last seven years, and they are coming after Keen. Good blocking scheme by Cal as he puts his foot in. Oh, this one. It's going into the end zone. It'll be no return. The ball had gone into the end zone. It bounced out a 59-yard punt for that man. And what a time to get it if you're a fan of the Golden Bears of California. 5.59 to play in the ball game, and Arizona's going to have it again. Well, you know, he wasn't kicking particularly well in some of the early games. And Bruce Snyder had felt that, unfortunately, watch the ball come down and hit right at the line. You see the chalk mark, you know. I tell you, that uh, a yard or two shorter might have stayed in. Look at Keene. He wants it to stop, but he's happy with where he put it. Great house is out of the backfield. He has a chest injury of some sort. That is not a little about Redmond in the first half, Don Heinrich. He's a, he's a tough fella, and yesterday, defensive coordinator Kent Bear said, other than Castle Redmond, nobody on our defense has played exceptionally well. And then as an afterthought, he said, you know, I don't know how Castle Redmond comes out here and plays. He's had two very, very painful knee surgeries, yet he's still effective. Yeah, it leads the team in tackles. Second how effective he is. Second and two. The kill in motion. The pitch goes to base. him for a loss. You see him coming across to the right 36. That's where he's lined up back behind there. They don't have anybody to account for him from a blocking standpoint, but that's normally he would be on the right of your screen in that linebacker position, but now he's like trailing the play and they don't have him accounted for on the offense. Arizona 
recovered it. Yeah, but now it's going to be fourth down regardless. 4.30 to go. And fourth and maybe a yard and a half. I, I suspect knowing that Dick Tomey is going to probably go for the football. But they have left that ball on the ground more today than I think in a long time coming from right to left on the screen. Little indecision there as you see 95 upfield. That's Dwayne Odom forcing him back to the inside. And then, of course, a hand coming in. And as he goes down, the ball popping away. And fortunately, back to the Arizona Wildcats as they catch a timeout. That'll stop the clock with 4-12 to play this evening. And Dick Tomey trying to figure a way. What play do we call? We need two yards, and we need him desperately. You know, I started to talk about Keene, the kicker there. And then a, a play came up. But as Bruce Snyder told us, that there was a period of time they had a disaster a few weeks ago on that Berkeley campus where they had a fire at one of the fraternities and several of his friends were involved in there and uh, he lost them and as a result uh, his, his mental attitude was was really unfortunately not quite with football as could be easily understood and he was not kicking as effectively and as a result he now appears to have come out of it uh, as of last week quite frankly, but it did have a major effect on his performance. So and Bruce Snyder said last night that so oftentimes we tend to focus too much on the sport of football than when a tragedy that befell the University of California at Berkeley campus as it did three weeks ago. In fact, it happened the night, uh, I believe, after or the night before their season opener at Wisconsin. Robbie Keane did not find out about it until after the uh, victory at Wisconsin. But you're absolutely right. It's a it's a loss that Robbie, quite frankly, has uh, has simply not gotten over yet, and it may take him a while. There's the total yardage breakdown. Arizona with 336. Cal not far behind. But most importantly, Cal has kept Arizona off the scoreboard. Flag is down. Malauulu has the football, and he stops shy of the first down, I believe. A flag is down on the near side. Boy, that's going to be the key right there, that flag. Who is it going to be on? because they've got him short of the first down. Now the nose of the football is right on the 30 yard line I believe. And Cornell Collier the linebacker is saying it's Cal's ball the other way going uh, that they've stopped him. Illegal procedure is the initial indication. John Hardy sprints out there. Let's listen. It's an illegal shift against the offense. We're going to measure to see if a first down was made before we accept or decline the penalty. That's a great, uh, and this great is job on the part of the officials. Really is exactly what took place. It really is, and to make the decision after the measurement. But you talk inches. Well, this is going to be inches. We saw one earlier that was inches. What do you think? I don't think he got it. The crowd will tell us, won't it? So there was enough for the first down by about a half an inch. Well, you have to bring somebody over from the engineering school to measure that one. Well, now it's going to be fourth down and five. Well, you can look at this two ways. Cal gets a break, but they had the penalty call to the extent that they get another chance to stop him. And on the other hand, it looks like Cal now is going to be in position to receive a punt that Arizona with 407 left is going to kick it away. Josh Miller standing inside his own 10 yard line. Trakes back at his 40. Good move, too, because uh, Cal would be in position to at least kick a field goal, but make it 31 23. They'd have an eight point lead, so Arizona would need a touchdown and a two point conversion. And that is not easy to get that two point conversion. Now there is some confusion. Four minutes and six seconds to play. It'll be Trakes. And I believe Timer, that is Anthony get Randall. The clock to four minutes. Watch me, I will start the clock. Fisher wants to run down to four minutes, so they'll take six seconds off. Game clock should read four minutes. Four zero zero. Cal goes to a double safety here, something they haven't done uh, the rest of the football game, trying to blanket the field. Randolph and Trey. And 
now we are set to go as the clock begin begins to run 356 355. Josh Miller waits good snap. The short kick will they get the bounce. Not particularly as it goes out of bounds at the 40 yard line 341 to play a 37 yard kick. Arizona with one timeout the Bears likewise. Well now if you're California 341 to play Don you're standing on the sideline along with Bruce Snyder. What is your play selection. Well. You know, they came out in that last series throwing the football. I think it's nice not to sit on something against the team that's tough to run on. However, you've had great success running the football. I would lead towards running the ball. I'd have Russell White in there. He is there, and he has got the ball trying to stay in bounds. And why they're running out of bounds, I don't know. I'd take that ball and take it inside the tackles and keep the clock running. Yes, I certainly wouldn't go wide to the short side of the field, quite frankly. Now, one of the things that they do is knowing they can dictate the defense a little bit figuring Arizona is going to shift to the wide side of the field and harder to run that way but still in all with a guy of White's ability I'd rather let him pick the daylight and string the people out a little bit on defense a gain of one it is second and nine three thirty seven remaining Arizona show it blitz velocity with time dumps it out it is cut by Zomo He's out across the midfield stripe, and he could go. What a ball they have. I'll tell you, if you could get a screen off with a blitz on, as they just did, and he looked left and went right to Zomal, who has not caught a screen. Now look at Pulaski, brings him in. He's going to wait any longer. He says, let me get that football out there. Blocker in front of it, number 68 right there, leading the play for him. And down the sidelines, it's a foot race. It's really a great play on the defense to knock him out of bounds right there in order to save the touchdown. And that was Zomal, what a run, 52 yards. defensive lineman. But this instance, nobody touched Joel Dixon. And that's the biggest sack of his career at this point. Two weeks ago on our team the Wingo Bear on Drive Network, we had the thriller at the Rose Bowl. As UCLA won it in the last second. Last week, the huge upset. The Washington Huskies over Southern California 31 to nothing. And then today here at Tucson, boy, what a game. 
and you know this is interesting because you have to kick the ball back to him and normally when you've had a safety against you you generally punt the football away now however they are trailing by seven points there's 318 to go they may put it on the ground and try the onside kick. I think that's it. But the next thing is that now, if Cal recovers it, even if they don't run it out or get into the end zone, as Joel Dixon is saying, yeah, baby, give me some more of those kind. <laughs> yeah, nobody touched me. I like those quarterbacks, particularly in the end zone. But the thing is, if Cal has to eventually do something with the football and there's still time left, they could kick a field goal by virtue of their positioning, or in all likelihood, pretty good positioning, and put this game out of reach. So there's a lot of little chess-type playing antics taking place here, particularly in the late stages of this game. What a football game we've had. Well, Arizona, this is a big game for them because after today, they go on the road to face UCLA, Oregon State, and then Southern California. The Pac-10 Game of the Week returns to Prime Network lineup on Saturday, October 13th. Down pass and a run by Russell White to take a 14 to 10 lead, and it has been California ever since. But a close football game, and you know, really before that last play for the touchdown, uh, I don't know what Mike Pulaski did in the huddle, but you got to come in there and say, hey, let's not make a mistake, let's not let anything go wrong. Look the way he has his tee upside down, it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The ball goes yeah. upside it's, down. Yeah. It's so interesting that it doesn't work. <laughs> bit of trickery here. He thinks he's going to get a little extra English on this on the onside kick attempt as they got 10 people over there. Now he'll probably trick him and left foot it over here in the right side with just one guy. <laughs> Boy, how about being underneath the pile and it's going to take place right here. Will they put it airborne? Every guy up there is saying, Boy, I hope it doesn't come to me. <laughs> There's that guy who's going to jump on him. Coverage 
doesn't leave anybody to throw the football to. He does a smart thing about not taking a chance. Bruce Snyder is on the sideline, squealing his arm, wanting it, uh, the clock to keep moving. Odom, one of the, this could work for or against Cal. It could slow up the offense of Arizona that's moving very well and maybe get the Cal defense to regroup. One of the things they've had trouble doing this year. Or it might, on the other hand, just give Arizona a chance to get it together and get a better play. Terry Vaughn, who had the big catch a moment ago, goes wide to the left. The give right up the middle. Time, a minute and 50. One timeout left for Arizona. None for Cal. Arizona up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and three. 140 remaining. Malolo up top. He wants to go. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Almost intercepted. Ball was tipped by Ron English, the strong safety. If that ball hadn't been high, a little lower. He had a lot of velocity on this football. You'll see him jump up in the air, blitz right there, pressure in his face, up over the top, but it was thrown so hard, he really couldn't get his hands on it. He came up just a little late as the ball was sliding by him, but that was near disaster for Arizona. That man's team today has rushed for 248 yards. Bruce Snyder's California Golden Bears has rushed for 232 yards. difficulty trying to cock his arm with Collier right on top of him. And I might add, there was excellent coverage. You see right there, now Collier's taking a pretty good angle to cut him off, and he really can't slow down to get under control just to crank it up and throw it away even. So that was really, you know, doesn't look like that big a play, but it really is. As here we are looking at fourth and, uh, well, about eight yards. So they lost a couple, but more importantly, they need pass rush right now. And a great job by Ray Sanders, his second interception of the of the ball game. Yeah, he has played a terrific football game. Dives down low for it. Actually, he could almost let it go. But you'll see Malulu sit back in there. Good passing lane, quite frankly. The pressure is getting to him. The ball down low. But fourth down doesn't much matter at this point. It is all Cal. 123 to go. One timeout left for Arizona. None for Cal. Defensive uh, personnel were closing in on him. His own running backs were not blocking to protect him. It's like they didn't know what play had been called. Pulaski keeps looking to the sidelines. Now, the plays are being signaled into him. I'm sure there's confusion. Coach Snyder is down there with the person signaling it in. Up to about the 10 yard line. Most importantly, the clock will continue to run. Arizona has the timeout, and they're going to call it right there. So while they step away, we will do likewise. We're coming back to wrap it up for you from Arizona Stadium in Tucson in a moment. For or what is it between these two teams? I said some teams just seem to match up. The key history, what could happen? It doesn't figure to be, you know. Just do it. Velosky with the keeper. And Arizona has, for the third consecutive year, stubbed their toe. 
on the Bears of California. Wow, for that group right there. Don, you said it early in the first period that California had played much, much better than their record or even their statistics would indicate. Yeah, they've given up 35 points a game on an average, but that it was really still not a clear picture of what's happening, even with all the numbers and yardage. So now with fourth down and six. Don't be surprised if we see to take a penalty. Hunter just may run around with this ball. Yeah, they are going to take the penalty. Bobby Keane claps his hands and says, hey, we'll gladly take that penalty, pal. Sure, now he can run around. Or kick it depends. You know, there's a lot of options right here. The, the problem is if you want him to run around and be tackled, you know, <laughs> you got to cover the football. He has worked as a disaster quarterback a few years ago, but still, at all, you know, people are going to be after that football if he decides to take a knee, and then you still got to kick it away. He could eat up four seconds, so he could run it out by sprinting from the corner. And then step out so he doesn't get pounded. Now the official has asked for three more seconds to be put on the clock, and they have done it. It is now seven seconds remaining. They'll walk off the penalty. And that changes it just a little bit. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because Robbie Keane, it's unlikely he can run around for seven seconds now. You give Daryl Lewis a chance at a return here. And boy, he broke one earlier today. Well, the block is the key right here, I think. You've got to try and go for the block. Percentages of the return, are, I think, are tougher than the block, even though you got a great return guy. Might even go for the safety. Look at this. Yep. Take the safety. Well, that uh, was automatic. We talked about him getting the safety and then kick it away. And now the clock is at four seconds. But <laughs> it's it's a, it's a not a very comfortable feeling to be sitting back there and here comes ten guys at you. <laughs> and you know, first you got to catch the football, which shouldn't be a consideration. But you, you know you have to do it. They do get dropped. And then you say, Ooh, how long do I wait? Because <laughs> you know, Don, instead of taking that ball and taking one step back, I'm surprised Robbie didn't take the ball and bolt run for a sideways. I, I agree. Well, that's why I said he could run to a corner, but he didn't want to take a chance. Uh, apparently, <laughs> he took the easy way out. I don't know that I could blame him on that count. And hey, the way he kicked that last punt that we saw that was actually 68 yards in the air from where he kicked it, he gets one like that. that the clock won't start until the ball is touched, but. Uh, we weren't this far south. I think uh, it would bring snow. You know, it's interesting. You talk about California's defense coming into this ball game against Miami. And last week against Washington State, they really played with very little intensity, absolutely no emotion whatsoever. You can't say that about this Cal defense today. No, you certainly can't. They seem to have arrived uh, for the first three games that they were struggling. And they came in with just one turnover on the plus side, created a number of them here this afternoon, several fumbles and so forth. That's that a good last point. big interception. Arizona had only uh, really given the football away five times all year long while taking it away from opponents, a total of 12. So they were plus seven in the giveaway yes. takeaway category today. That, too, not the case. So I think uh, as I think about this one, the Bears had three fumble recoveries and that last interception. So there's or two interceptions. So there's five uh, in itself, though. So maybe the fortunes are changing a little bit for them on breaks going their way. Bobby Keane will let it go, and they'll try and get downfield and cover it. And the Bear catch go for no. Darrell Lewis is going to try and do something with the football. Flanks go down. That's a forward lateral. It's over with anyway. This one's done. Clock expires. Final score. Cal, 30. Arizona, 25. Don't go away. We're going to come back and wrap it up for you. Just a moment, you're watching the Pac-10 Game of the Week.